Good evening, everyone. So why am I showing you a picture of snow, which you um, probably are, some of you are happily anticipating and some of you are dreading? Well, when we think about climate, we often think about our experiences, such as an unusual snow. This was before winter. Or we might see ice on the river and think, is this just like the good old days when everyone, when all the rivers iced over? Or is it not enough and should we be worried? When we see the swollen creeks after a terrible storm, do we wonder, is this um, an anomaly or is it something that's going to happen more in the future? When we see the trees that are downed by those storms, do we view it as just part of forest revitalization or another sign that we have a serious problem? Well, the United Nations released a report in August 2021, which says indeed that this is a problem and that some of the uh, severe weather that we have been experiencing is likely due to climate change and is likely to become worse in the future. But often what is missing from our um, concerns and thinking about this issue is people. And so too frequently, we're focusing on technology, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying technology is not important, but too often that's the focus rather than the people who are impacted by these changes. And too frequently, we are not understanding that every human is not affected equally. This is a picture I took from um, our uh, wheelchair accessible, uh, gender neutral restroom in this new building, um, just upstairs. And this is certainly not a great technological um, advance. The uh, mechanism is pretty much the same as in all the other um, restrooms on campus. But it meets human needs. And so we now have not enough <laughs> of, of these restrooms where individuals who use wheelchairs or um, people who feel more comfortable in a gender neutral restroom can make use of it. And so this is an example of how we can merge the human issues with the, with the technological and scientific challenges. I want to use an example of how we can consider all of these issues together. Um, I want to use the example of World Toilet Day. So as we speak here tonight, we are only a couple of days away from November 19th, which is the annual World Toilet Day. And this is um, an event that started um, in the early 2000s by a nonprofit World Toilet Organization that was trying to bring attention to the sanitation crisis that faces the globe. The United Nations then took on um, this day, and it's now one of their official celebrations to raise awareness. And it's also an example of the human element that I'm going to focus on tonight, which is gender, and how it is related to these um, important issues we're talking about. I also want to relate it to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which you may have heard of. Um, there are 17 of these goals that the United Nations is pursuing. 
And you might think um, that they're not necessarily connected, but if you look at the, the image that the United Nations uses for those 17 goals, it's a circle. And they are interconnected. And that's one of the, um, one of the good things that the United Nations has been doing is showing those human interconnections. For example, clearly sanitation was the original motivating factor for the development of World Toilet Day. But there are many places in the globe where people do not have access to clean water. Some of those are in the United States. And water and sanitation is crucial for health and well-being. And all genders are not equally impacted. So, for example, giving birth is something that certainly requires clean water and sanitation and access to good health care. The first sustainable, sustainable development goal is no poverty. And of course, poverty is something that impacts all humans, but again, not equally. The United Nations and others have identified gender as a, essentially a risk factor in poverty. This is sometimes been referred to as the feminization of poverty because women are much more likely to be poor. And other members of traditionally marginalized groups as well are at greater risk from poverty. And climate change is going to more heavily impact people who don't have the financial resources that others have. One of the uh, recent UN reports notes that there are indeed roughly 11 million more women than men in extreme poverty across the globe. And climate change is going to hit those in extreme poverty much more heavily than those who are more advantaged. So it's all interconnected. Education. Girls are at risk for not completing their education when they are in conditions of poverty without adequate health care, and in particular, without access to clean water and sanitation. And so there is a lot of evidence that girls are, um, once they reach pu puberty, begin menstruating, if they do not have access to adequate sanitary facilities may um, miss school or drop out entirely. So you can see, I hope, the interconnections of gender with all of these other issues that um, certainly World Toilet Day has tried to um, raise our consciousness about. But one of the weaknesses in the UN approach, in my view, has been not really recognizing how important gender is when talking about climate change and climate action. So if you look at the, um, the SDG 13 page, there's almost nothing about gender. The only thing I could find was this obscure um, target, 13B, which didn't really talk about gender more broadly, but rather a particular issue that they were working on. It's important that the United Nations raise the visibility of gender as an issue in climate change because it impacts the uh, mainstream media's attention to these issues. As recently 
as 2017, and I see I have a, a typo on my slide. <laughs> um, <laughs> it should be 2017. Um, the New York Times is saying that the link between climate change and women's rights may seem baffling to some. Well, it's not baffling to me, but apparently was baffling to a lot of people. But the good news is in 2021, they have, the New York Times did recognize the importance of looking at gender um, as part of the climate change issue. And they um, cited the work of, of one of the um, authors of one of the books that you may have seen on display out there, um, who has um, been a very important um, voice in emphasizing how climate change is differentially and negatively impacting women. So you heard, um, you may have heard in the news about the November um, 2021 COP26 conference, which I think really did elevate the gender issue to a new level. They, um, the COP people had actually developed a gender action plan a couple of years ago, but the gender day that they had just a couple, um, in November really got a lot of media attention and got people talking about how important it is to pay attention to gender when we're talking about climate change. The United Nations has made other efforts, such as the International Women's Day um, in 2019, where they featured five reasons why climate action needs women. Everyone needs to be involved in the solutions to climate change. And right now, the UN hasn't done a super job of involving women scientists at the highest levels of these organizations. And they, they admit that, and they're trying to do better. Um, it's also true in the disciplines, uh, the scientific disciplines, that we don't have enough of everyone involved in coming up with the solutions. We also have to recognize that women right now are on the ground working in areas that are impacted by climate change, and if they help, with mitigation strategies and changes, it will make a crucial difference. You may be wondering why I have to mention that women are significant members <laughs> of communities. There are many examples, unfortunately, of community, attempts at community-based solutions to climate change issues where women were not part of the process and part of the solution. And that has to change. And as I've already discussed, women are at higher risk due to poverty and due to other aspects of their typical role, such as childbirth. So, the UN is pledging, going forward, to integrating gen gender in all areas of its initiatives. So what would be some steps that you could take in the future? The United Nations has an enormous set of resources that you can use in the classroom in your research, in the community, they're free. They have um, data and reports and ideas for action. 
I, um, along with my colleagues, um, Veronica Montesinos and Elizabeth Mazur, surveyed hundreds of students who attended events like this. <laughs> and we um, asked them, did they um, enjoy the event? Was it fun? Did they learn anything? And all the events were not equally fun, as you can imagine. But whether fun or not, the students said usually that they learned something. So we asked them then to respond yes or no to this statement. This activity has motivated me to do something differently. And we got um, about a third of our um, students said yes. And I think that's a pretty decent response. And almost all of them then gave us examples of what they were going to do differently. That they were going to learn more. That they were going to be more open to new ideas, to be more tolerant and understanding of different people, and to take actions, to volunteer, and to behave in a more responsibly, responsible way. And so, I would leave you with the hope that you will do the same, that as you learn about this issue, that yes, it's serious, but there also are actions that we can all take. And I hope you will be motivated, as um, the other students were, to do something differently to make a difference. Thank you.